As I write these words in my journal, it is the year 1806, and I'm looking back on a life honored by my service to the United States of America. I've been a cavalry commander, held a seat in Congress, and finally I attained the governorship of Virginia. But the best thing that has ever happened to me is my beautiful young wife, Anne. She's barely 26 years old, and she's already given me three beautiful children. Harry, my darling, you must stop working and see what I bought today. Just a moment, darling. I'm almost finished. There. Now you can see everything. <laughs> you are incorrigible. All right, you have my full attention. Oh, Harry, it's all so beautiful. It's all the latest fashions from Paris. Look at this one. This is my favorite. There, what do you think? Do I look Parisian? I think that that hat is lucky to have your pretty head to sit up on. Oh, Harry. Why are you so good to me? <laughs> well, that's quite simple, my darling. I love you. My evenings on our plantation were most comfortable. There were many pleasant dinners with good friends and all political allies. I really wish you would consider writing for my newspaper, Harry. I know you're a busy man, but your views on federalism should be read by the people. You compliment me, Alexander. I agree. You're a fine author, Harry. Your description of George Washington is first in war, first in peace, and first in the hearts of his countrymen. We'll go down in history. Thank you, Thomas. Of course, I esteem your opinion, Alexander, and I will consider your offer. I'm sorry to interrupt, gentlemen, but I'm suddenly feeling unwell. What is it, Ann? I'm sure it's nothing, Harry. Well, perhaps you should retire for the evening. Yeah? <laughs> Excuse me, gentlemen. <laughs> I'd never seen Annie taken ill before. I was shaken by it and extremely concerned. <laughs> What's the matter? What's wrong with her? She has a very high fever and is in and out of consciousness. I'll be honest with you, sir. I don't know what the malady is. She's young, strong, she will recover. I truly hope so. I'm gonna prescribe sulfates, perhaps they'll help. All we can do is keep an eye on her. Thank you, Doctor, thank you for coming to us. Anne's condition did not improve, it only continued to worsen. Dr. Bradley used everything at his disposal, but she did not respond. Harry. What is it, darling? I've given you three fine children. Maybe my time here is done. You mustn't say that. Don't give up a hand, fight on. I love you. I love you, Harry. Don't leave me, please. I'm sorry. Oh, my beautiful. Anne never regained consciousness after that. Dr. Bradley pronounced her dead later that day. I found myself frozen in place, unable to move. I'd weathered so many battles and seen so much death in my time but nothing had ever left me so devastated. 
grave diggers were to start their work that evening. I wanted the moment of Annie's actual burial to be a private one, just shared by the two of us. How can I put you in the ground, my beautiful darling? I must be going crazy. It can't be. Annie! Oh my god, Annie! What happened? In hindsight, Dr. Bradley guessed that Annie must have been in a living death. Once the illness had run its course, she revived. One year later, my wife, Ann Lee, gave me another child. It was a boy. My dreams were that he would follow in my footsteps and become a leader of men. We named him Robert E. Lee.